What's going on people? It's your man the YB back once again. So I did a video yesterday of Tyson Fury's reaction to Fury vs Garnu. His conclusion was essentially AJ is still no good. AJ couldn't do nothing with Usyk. He may have built the mixed martial arts bodybuilder. However, styles make fights is what Tyson Fury alleges. AJ has made some comments or reacted to Fury's comments and he said F-U-C-K Tyson Fury I don't like trash talking people but I heard him say I'm here to do commentary on these two sausages <laughs> Oh, listen man you got to feel bad for Fury because I ain't going to lie to you it could have been a sausage fest right it could have been that it could have been a sausage fest it could have been AJ in there running around and Nganu just looking ponderous. It could have been that. That was a possibility, I said. Yeah? The YB before the fight was on his hat, man. I was covering all bases. I said, listen, AJ might turn up. That's In my mind, it wasn't the most likely. The most likely was he was going to be AJ versus Pulev type dude who was scared of his own shadow. Why? It's evidence-based, right? Yeah, he had one good fight against Wallin. But there was loads of speculation around that fight. Oh, well, Wallin's a sparring partner. Oh, well, AJ hand-picked that fight. Fine. Ngannou looked dangerous. We know Ngannou can punch. Ngannou, in his first fight, put down Tyson Fury. So, in my mind, the odds were AJ was going to turn up and be political. Like he'd been with Usyk twice, etc, etc. Ngannou could have turned up. And bear in mind... The only defence Fury has for losing to Nganu was the fact that he just kept running at him. Fury took that Wilder win, or both of them Wilder wins, where he could just... Listen, Wilder's got no legs, fact. Wilder has no legs and no chin, and he can't box much. So combine the three together, daddy long legs, daddy long legs. No chops. His chops is Eritrean, right? It's pointy. Got a pointy chops. So when you... Think about leverage here, people. I'm not a physician. I'm not a physician. No physics. Um, what, are, what are physics heads called? Physics heads. Um, either way, I, I do no physics. Not a lick of physics. Understand. If you've got a pointy chops, if your chops is more pointy, it creates more leverage around the point, around the pivot. You understand? If you've got a little short, short spud chin, let's say your chin was that, that wide, there's no leverage to be had. If you've got a Deontay Wilder chin, it's like... Looking like an Egyptian. They're Egyptian dons. Their chins are like... Do you understand? Super long chins. That creates a lot of leverage around the point here. So you click the end of it. Whoop, and your head goes spinning. <laughs> your head essentially goes spinning. So again, Wilder. Daddy long legs. Number one. Number two. Pointy error train chops. No good if you clip it. Number three. Can't box a lick. Put the three together. Fury can walk in forward. Yeah. Wilder's legs are like... Whoop, it was all over the place, ungamely. His arms ungamely, right? His arms ungamely. Wilder's legs were made for galloping. Watch him play basketball. There's good videos out there. Type in Deontay Wilder basketball. People are saying he can jump. He's got game. He a basketball player. That's the truth. Wilder, no, no, no cap here, people. Watch Wilder play basketball and watch him box. The the kind of. The conclusion of watching both footages would be he should have been an NBA basketball player. We knew that. We knew that, people. So Fury running forward and clapping Wilder, he thought that was his new thing. And we all did. I did as well. I thought, wow, he could have run for everyone now. Then he gets in there with Chisora. Yeah? Did that same kind of shtick. Couldn't score. No knockdowns. Yeah, he pummeled Chisora, but he couldn't hurt him. Fact. Then he goes in there with Nganu, who's as big as, if not bigger in terms of weight, than Tyson Fury. He's strong. He's got a big, like a, um, a sawn-off shotgun chin. It's like, doof, got that, doof, that thick giga-chad chin. It's not pointy, like Wilder's. There's not, a much, there's not much leverage around the pivot. You understand? So, put them factors together. Fury goes running forward, and he runs essentially into a brick wall. Fury was doing the same things he was doing with Wilder. Oh! Stepping in, leaping in with a big one too. Oh, oh. And them shots bounced off. As we could have predicted. Because they bounced off Chisora too. Right? Chisora's been chinned. Yeah? David Matoza painted hay. 
He'd been knocked his aura out, what, 15 years ago, best part of. The best part of 15 years ago, 2011. Chizuru been knocked out, yeah? AJ, I mean, Fury hasn't been able to knock out Chizuru, not even once, in three fights. All of them went 50-50, life and death, 12 rounds. And guess what, people? If it had been 15 rounds, it would have gone 15 rounds, because Fury can't punch, yeah? So, um, the point I was making was, Fury kind of made, uh, made Ngannou look good. When you're running at someone and they're half sharp, it gives you it gives it gave Ingarnu the benefit of the doubt. He was able to catch Fury and counter punch. Notice what AJ did. AJ didn't, and rightfully so, because come running in recklessly, believing he's the D O G S S B O L L A C K S. He didn't believe it. He believed he had superior skill and superior hand game, and he showed that. Yeah, his jab, I mean, being more critical of the performance, his jab wasn't, he didn't establish it, although it had only been two rounds, or well, barely two rounds. The only thing AJ established was his right hand, and damn, did he establish it, yeah? Boop, and just, just lick, lick, licked it off a few times. I think a few of them, I think, one, I think the first one might have been a, a, lead, a lead right hand. At one point even, I've got a video coming soon, AJ pulled and countered. A very short pull as well. And Garnu thinking through a jab, AJ went and then banged it. Fair play to him. That is that takes supreme confidence. We've seen Floyd pull that off. It takes supreme confidence to know, hey, this guy is going to throw a punch. I'm just going to stand here, move my head an inch or two back, and then lick off. That and to have to have established that range and that level of control in round two. For example, I don't, maybe some of you historians can quote me on this, but I don't remember seeing Floyd pull counter anyone in round two. I just don't remember it. Normally it takes Floyd half the fight to kind of get them, get them ranges in. AJ dialed him really quick, and that's something to be, you got to be like fair play. Um, anyway, the point I'm making is, Fury, Fury made Ngarni look dangerous, yeah? He made him look dangerous. Um... And AJ did the opposite. And it turned out there was nothing sausage about it. Don't get me wrong, Ngarnu looked and sounded a bit like a sausage. In fact, if you look at him on the floor, he's kind of he looked baked, right? He looked like a German Spitzel sausage. Yeah, just a big sausage on the floor. Dark as well cooked, 100%. There's no doubt. If you saw Ngarnu on the floor, it'd be fair to say that is a well-cooked sausage, would it not? You wouldn't say it's undercooked, would you? He would cook in, in multiple ways. He was neurologically cooked, yeah, and the complexion of his skin was cooked, fully cooked, well, well-roundedly cooked, all different levels he was cooked on. Neurologically, I mean, listen, if you brought in some sort of neuroscience cat and told him to scan in Garnier's brain, he would conclude, hey, yo, this dude cooked, yeah? He wouldn't say this guy's buzzing with life, would he? No, he's cooked, flatlined. There's not much, there was literally close to zero neurological activity going on when Ngannou's big ass was on the floor. Fact. Yeah? So he was a, more or less a sausage. So if, in that respect, Fury was 50% right. Yeah? Fury was doing commentary on a, a big sausage. Ngannou was a big sausage. But what Fury's missed, where, where Fury went wrong was the fact that, like, for these two to be a sausages, yeah, Ngannou was never a sausage to you though. In fact, Ngannou was your offender. Ngannou turned you into a victim. Had your eye all bust up, had you on the floor all silly looking, right, etc, etc. So you can't even call, if you want to call AJ a sausage, do what you want, but you can never call Ngannou a sausage. Ngannou might be a sausage to AJ, he ain't a sausage to you. To you, he's a real damn 50-50, life and death, could go either way, who knows, on the edge of your seat, career-defining kind of dude, right? So, if anything, Fury should have said, hey, I made to do commentary on one sausage and one dude who nearly knocked me spark out in his first fight. That's what he should have said. Yeah, th those two ain't sausages to you. And after what we saw AJ do, really, there's nothing sausage anywhere. Because even though AJ knocked him spark out, you couldn't do it. So that's a fact. And because AJ knocked him spark out, both of them, both of them, 
it would be fair to conclude that these dudes, these dudes are two assailants. These these two these two dudes are assailant level dudes. Yeah, I'm here to do commentary on these two assailants because they would be assailants to him. They would victimise Tyson Fury. He know that. He know it. And that's why ever since the, I'm becoming more and more convinced now that AJ really did lay paws on Tyson Fury at Finchley because nothing really made sense when AJ fell off a few years ago. We was all saying, I couldn't work it out. I thought, well, it's a big money fight, and it's, it should be pretty easy. AJ was in there, not struggling, but he was politicking with Yusik and Pulev and Ruiz. He didn't have anything scary about him. That other dude, Muffin Top, what's his name? Muffin Top, the guy that Dillian White fought, and then AJ fought. Pol politicking. Them fights was useless. Hellenius for the first six rounds, useless. Right, but even still, as early as August last year, Fury didn't want to know. He didn't want to get stuck in. He didn't want to run it with AJ, did he? So, wait there, people. My battery's about to cut out steel. It's a pain situation. What's going on here? What is going on here? I don't even know. I the battery's back, folks. 100%. Some, some, some. Oh, no, about that one. Where was we? Yeah, anyway, I lost some bars. I lost the bars. I was I lost the trailer. I thought I was on here, but end of the day, man, Fury talked too much. Um, I got videos coming soon. Inganu, unfortunately for him, he talked too much as well. Yeah, Inganu did, did too much talking for what we saw in there. And don't get me wrong, at the time I agreed with it. I was like, yeah, he's a good bars, but he ain't show enough for me. Yeah, he ain't showed nothing. In fact, he showed he got no chin as well. He showed AJ not his chin back to the UFC. I did a video yesterday. Yeah, UFC is where he needs to be right now. It's not in boxing. He don't have the right to box. AJ took his right to boxing away, I believe, and knocked it square out of his barnet for him. Yeah, your barnet's just part of your head. AJ knocked the boxing out of it. There's no boxing left between the top. Listen, the top of your head is what your barnet, right? There's no boxing in him. Yeah, from the tip of his barnet to the tip of his toes, there's no boxing left. AJ knocked it out in round two. Damn near round one, right? So, back to the UFC go. So, when AJ says, I don't like trash-talking people, well, he has a time and a place. But this does show you the, the kind of quality of the man that AJ is. He took a lot. He took a lot of clowning in there. And Garner was telling him, listen, if I hit you like I hit Fury, you ain't got the chin. We've seen you haven't got the chin. Oops. And still, AJ's almost to a fault again. It's just, listen, it's, it's working for him right now. So, I'm not criticising it, but I'm just saying that, Listen, he says, that guy is a UFC champion, a phenomenal story, someone who's changed his life. He's just too disrespectful, forget him right now. But Nganu was disrespectful as well. I guess the difference is, at least Nganu rolled the dices. Yeah, Nganu talked his talk, as he should do, and got knocked spark out. That's how you're supposed to travel. That's how warriors travel to heaven. Fury does too much talking. Yeah, he was calling Usyk a sausage, and Usyk this at the other, and guess what he pulled out? So, Usyk, I mean, Fury refuses to meet his destiny, yeah? He's always trying to skip and duck and weave out of his, out of his business. AJ's the real deal, and I'm glad to see him. I wish he was, I wish he was more per- Oh, wait, no, tell I. He has been personal. A few days ago, he told us, I punched Tyson and Fury up in Finchley. Those are good bars, yeah? And if I was AJ in this situation, I'd say, listen- I don't know nothing about no sausage, yeah? 100%. The only thing I know about sausage is how to cook your ass. The same as Ngannou, to be quite frank. Don't get me wrong, Fury would end up being a much more... He'd be, be more, well, he'd be more like a, a Frank Furta, more pale, more pink looking. I'll cook Tyson... Listen, look what we did to the big the big, um, the big, big rhino looking ass, Ngannou. Cooked him. Neurologically, in and out, yeah? Cooked him. And I'll turn Tyson Fury into a red, raw, pink-looking Frank Furter the same way. And he know it. Yeah? Why do you think he's got sausage on the mind? And we know Fury's always been intrigued and fascinated. I've got a video coming soon. Yeah, when AJ knocked out Ngannou, Paris Fury was there like... Just thirsting for the bull. That's she was like this. She was straight on it like... I've seen that... Listen, I ain't gonna lie. I've seen that kind of first before. This is the athletic, the athletic bull first. Do you understand? Certain individuals, they get 
um, aroused by seeing bulls, bulls perform. It just sends their erotica system wild. Yeah, and I guarantee you, if Tyson Fury went home with Paris that night, she'd have been extremely fertile. There would have been baby number 10 on the way. You see that one there? Yeah? The pheromones. AJ knocking out Ngannou in that fashion. It set her pheromones off. And she would have been extremely fertile in that period. That's just what it is, people. So, when really, the 10th te baby in the family will be all Anthony Joshua. It may even come out dark. It may even come out of Team Lighty. That, that might be the case. I, I don't know. We don't know, people. The powers at play here. It might be the case that AJ is Anuaki. Maybe the Anuaki came down and patterned AJ up and gave him that, oh, I don't know, seeing him like, he pulled, he went, boop, and then he literally about two inches, he went, boop, the punch, the punch literally nearly grazed his nose. He was like this, I've never seen, ever, like, I've seen Floyd pull back here, yeah? Floyd pulls back and he's like, he pulls his head like six foot backwards, but AJ was like this, it was like almost Matrix like, like this, doof, and it didn't connect, and he's like, boof, and he put the right hand over. So it could be a case, people, more than likely, the Anuaki came down in the night and they patterned him with some kind of genetic upgrades. Um, some genetic upgrades and some experience upgrades. They uploaded the whole thing. It's a bit like the Matrix when he goes in there and he, they download all the kind of combat skills. It's, it could be one of them ones. The Anuaki came down, they took AJ onto, his, onto their ship and just plugged him in and just patterned all of, his, all of his hardware. In fact, his hardware and his software, they patterned it all up and he come back. And now he's like, kind of thing, one of them. Um, and on that basis, it may also be the case that his, his pheromones now are kind of transmitting information. Yeah? They're transmitting information. So, or transmitting um, reproductive genetic information. Hence, Paris Fury's 10th baby may be light skin. It may be. You just, I just can't comment. We haven't seen the extent to which AJ's software and hardware has been patterned. Do you understand? He might have the full bits now, where he can literally impregnate a ting without having to touch them. That, these are the levels we're talking about here. Yeah, there's a film out there from a few years ago, probably 20 years ago now, and it, it changed where, what's it called? It had, um, did it have Snipes in it, Wesley Snipes? Um, I'm not sure, but essentially, it had become, it had become disgusting for people, for people to have physical intercourse. They'd put these headsets on, and they'd get on it kind of thing. And, uh, that, it could be one of them ones that, you understand? AJ ain't got no headset on, but still, it's the next level above headsets. He's just transmitting genetic reproductive information right now. You understand that one? So if it comes out light skin with blue, green eyes, damn, that's AJ baby. I'm calling it now. I'm not gonna call it spare spade. Yeah, it won't be. Listen, it won't be Paris's fault. It won't be Paris's fault. It will not be infidelity. It will be the Anuaki things, the Anuaki bits that AJ has um, picked up on. Anyway, yeah, let me know you thought. <laughs> Smash the like button, subscribe. Um, and leck off the bell. AJ should stay on dude's ass. Stay on Fury's ass. Stay on him. Yeah, all this other, all this bit here, trying to be political. Oh, I'll leave Francis alone. Francis is a big man. He talked his big man things, and he got smoked. So don't. He don't need protecting. Yeah, he can handle himself. Just stay on Fury is my my advice here. Yeah, someone who's changed his life. Do you know what I'm saying? Fair play to him, but nonetheless, he talked too much. And Garnu talked too much. Yeah. That's what we know now. He talked too much. I was backing him. He talked too much and I liked it. And he got knocked out. So, again, I'm evidence-based. Case by case. If you talk too much and I like it, that's one thing. If you get knocked spark out, that's a whole nother game, right? I'm not, I can't lie to no one. Anyway, like the button, subscribe. And I'll catch you, man, on the flip. Mm, no doubt.